welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. Guys, this is my review recap. Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Season 3, Episode 10, Made You Look. Season finale, y'all. This our last time. This our last time. So you know we got to do it one more time. I'm a hustler, baby. Make money, make money, make money. When she hits the fan, you take money. South side. Listen, y'all. The color is dead. Red. Sipping on some, sipping on some, sipping on some yak. Because Ronnie is a pack. Boom, bye, bye, how with your ass is dead? Rock shot you right in your day and go ahead. Listen, y'all. Celebrate good times. Come on. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Holiday. <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> it's a party going on in the den. Let's celebrate. Because Ronnie's out of here. Yes. And get his ass on out of here. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, celebration. He's going to get his ass on out of here. A hey, celebration. We going to celebrate and party tonight. Hey, hey. Listen, y'all. They were shooting. Oh, uh, made you look. They tried to come at the rock, y'all. They tried to have come at the rock, but we knew that wasn't going to happen. How would your ass had to go because you over here playing games, talking about is Marvin or you? And you know if we got to choose between Marvin and you, it's going to be you, boo. You got to get the hell up out of here. That's just all it was. Period. Okay? Child. We got Dag on Juke over here. Definitely trying to get her behind up out of here. She don't want nothing to do with the damn Thomas name. We got Lulu and Rehab, okay, doing a little bit of therapy, trying to relax with late release. But baby, he had me scared for a minute because he over here having some Dag on suicidal freaking thoughts. Like, no, Lulu, no, we cannot have that boo, all right? And like I said, we wanted to try to serve freaking Marvin up like hell to the no. That's a no, no, we ain't doing that. That's not even a question that's not negotiable it's nothing for us to talk about so how would your ass have to get up or out of here period point blank ronnie tried to come at rock he thought he was really about to do something and ain't do a damn thing send some shooters that obviously couldn't shoot okay yeah made you look and that was about it and run your ass into some other damn gone cause all right and you know Okay, and child, he over here trying to do the okie doke. He had to turn up on Ronnie and let him know, listen, you don't know me. This ain't what it what you think this is, and I ain't who you think I am. I said, all right, Kanan, let him know. And famous stood ten toes down, y'all. Stand ten toes down. Say what you want about famous, but he did not snitch, okay? He held it down. Mama done went over here and took the freaking hammer into the freaking precinct, child. Lord of mercy, let's go ahead and get into this episode, y'all. Break it on down, take it from the top, you know how we do. So, baby, we all starting out dramatic, okay? Because, of course, we had the dramatic ending last week when we left off. And, you know, we seeing um, grown, well, we hearing grown Canaan, I should say, basically talking about, you know, uh when you dead and when you leave somebody you know behind and we get in this you know view of freaking lulu laying there with his eyes closed to make it all mystery and like oh my god is he dead is he out of here but we all knew you know he wasn't going nowhere so you know no he is not he just was laying there sleeping and then we get to him and rock um actually talking it out in this therapy session and you know we find out that basically you know rock of course was coming with mad attitude and was like i don't understand what i'm here for okay i ain't supposed to be the one getting the therapy you supposed to be giving it to my brother what am i paying you all this money for because y'all of course more than you know what i'm saying going away on somebody damn island and doing a couple of different trips and so He's like, well, you're here because your brother basically, you know, when we ask who's the most important person to you, it's you. Like, you are his world. You the one that he loved the most. You the one that he asked to be here. So that's why you're here. And, you know, we see her soften up just a little touch, just a little bit, okay, talking about, you know... I love him too. This is my baby brother. You know, I basically, you know, was the first one to hold him when he was born and all of this. And so, you know... 
when they was leaving from outside of talking and they came outside by her car, she's basically like, you know, I've always loved you, Lou. You my heart or whatever, right? And he's telling her that he loved her. And she actually says, I'm sorry, okay? I apologize. She finally gave him a full-on apology. And he finally told her, you know, I should have been a man about it, okay? And stood on my damn ten toes and admitted that I'm the one that made the choices that I made. And I was like, yes, about damn time, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and hug it out. Let's bring it together because we are family. All right, they was giving me a little teary eyed, a little teary eyed, y'all. Yeah. All right, but we love to see it. But it was just such still a cloud hanging over them once she was, you know, driving away from him. And the look on his face, he just still looked really freaking sad, you know, and he was talking about the fact that he needed things to be real. He needed to admit them so that he could accept them and be able to move forward. Like this stuff still exists just because you're able to move away from it, you know, in a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else can and you not speaking on it doesn't make it any more real, you know what I'm saying? Unreal or whatever, right? But she was saying not everything is meant to be set out into the world, which is definitely true. But he was like, I'm talking about my feelings, like my feelings, that shit belongs to me is real and they matter to me. And of course, for Rock, it's like feelings, feelings. And the doctor was basically saying to her, like, you ain't got no feelings. And she was like, of course, I got feelings, but I ain't got time to be, you know, what I'm saying, sitting here moping in it. But the doctor was like, well, I see a lot of anger coming out of you and anger ain't nothing but a manifestation of hurt It's just a different way way of you know you feeling what you're feeling so you're angry because you're hurt and she talking about something i ain't hurt i'm just over this bullshit nah rock you have been hurt in your damn times that's why you got that guard up that's why you be trying to come strong and you know do the things that you do so we was kind of getting down to you know the root of some of these issues y'all and um it was cute it was cute for what it was but we got to get back to business all right and so basically we then see Marv. Marv is over here at Juggles Funeral Child. We got a double dag on funeral because, of course, you know, the baby girl passed away and so did Gerald. And, you know, we seeing his other daughter just standing there looking so sad. Of course, now she have to go on the foster key. And we got the dag on, you know, FBI didn't get the point of this just to come around and wave, you know what I'm saying, they, you know what, and make themselves seem big and be like, you know, it's your fault that this happened you're the one that took um juggled out and he was like you know you tore up a whole bunch of people and now his daughter's gonna have to be in foster care and he's like nah actually this is y'all guys for because y'all sat here and was you know putting him in a position that you knew that he couldn't handle or whatever. They talking about something that's going to be real rough for that kid. And he was like, like, y'all give a damn. You know, Jerry wasn't made for what y'all had him doing. And you really didn't give a shit about nothing. So why don't you try to, instead of, you know, forcing him to try to set me up, do some damn real, you know, real police work. So they was telling him, like, just because Jerry is gone, that doesn't mean that we're done with you. And he was like, all right, well, good luck with that. Because, you know, y'all some fake ass drug dealers, <laughs> whatever. And he walked away. He getting in the daggone car and they talking about see you around. And it's like, yeah, okay, watch me. Okay, watch me work. Now, anyway, Kane and Child, we did not need to see these strokes. I didn't give a damn about that. He over here knocking boots with freaking crystal or whatever. Of course, not using no protection and want to get up and hit the daggone blunt and talk about, you know, I ain't trying to be sitting around talking with you right now. I got a lot more things on my mind because she's talking about some of we boyfriend and girlfriend now. And he is like, uh, yeah, I don't know about all of that, right? We kicking it. And so she's like, well, you were saying all before that we couldn't really get into no conversations about it because you didn't want to make your cousin feel away. But the group is over with. So there's no reason for us to keep, um, you know, I'm saying anything quiet. And he like, listen, girl, right now, that's not at the top of my list. You know what I'm saying? I got other things that I got to do. I want to smoke this and I want to think about how I'm going to handle my other, you know what I'm saying, situations or whatever. So soon as he stand up, he was like, let's just, you know, blaze this and relax or whatever. And she looking, she over here talking about some, I'm late. It's like, okay, girl, because y'all obviously ain't been using no damn protection and you should have been getting to that beforehand instead of sitting here rocking and rolling with him in the damn <laughs> matches on the freaking floor. Talking about some, I'm late as soon as he finished and he looking at her like, girl, are you freaking kidding me? But I'm like, yeah, that's what happened when y'all doing stuff raw. Okay, give it to me 
<laughs> now, in the meantime, Juke is over here meeting up with Aisha, and she's pissed off. Like, girl, I ain't been hearing nothing from you. You know, I shouldn't even talk to you. I shouldn't have came. I called out of work to take out time. You know, I had other things to do, a busy schedule today, but I still came and met with you, and Juke is like, thank you for doing that. And she was like, you know, why the heck you shut me out like that? And, of course, Juke was embarrassed about the whole situation, and we found out that it's actually been two weeks since everything went down and so she was like you know i'm sorry about that but i was really embarrassed and aisha was like you never have to be embarrassed around me about anything like i don't give a damn she knows she said she just was so upset at the fact that this is not her this is her family and the things that's happening is because of her family and she's like i get that but you know i know who you are and so of course now we want to give a little kissy poo and juke is like where that came from like i never saw that you know what i'm saying between me and you and she was like well i wasn't too sure what my feelings really was and especially i guess after you know, talking to Kanan or whatever, and when I realized that that was over with, it's like, yeah, I really am feeling something, and now that I know what it is, I figured, let me go for it, so we go head over to this diner, and we sitting and talking there, and she starts telling her about how she's gonna be joining the army, and it's like, army, really? She's like, girl, like, why are you gonna leave me now like this, and she said, well, I didn't, you know, what happens to us, and Juke said, I didn't know there was a us to begin with, and she was like, well, now that you know how you feel about it, so she's telling Juke she's gonna wait for her but juke was like nah i appreciate that that means so much to me that you're saying that but at the end of the day i'm not gonna ask you to wait for me and i don't expect you to wait for me you know what i'm saying you still gotta go ahead and live your life so that was cute for what it was child okay now we basically um child lord of mercy we have you know Howard being called in with his dad going rep, right? We not letting this go. Howard thought he flipped it and reversed it on them last week, child. And he thought he was getting away, but they were saying they still have questions and there's still more things that's pointing directly to him and still things that he got to explain. And Howard is still coming off cocky and saying, nah, I want to get this over with now. I don't got time for it to be dragged out. Y'all making it bigger than what it is. You know, um, it should be a way for us to resolve all of this. He's like, I don't know no Marvin Thomas and I don't know no damn Gerald because they was trying to bring up Gerald and the fact that they found him OD last week and is looking suspicious and he's like so are you trying to accuse me of taking out Gerald and in all honesty <laughs> Howard ain't really lying about that part he didn't never have nothing to do with Gerald and technically speaking he never had nothing to do with Marvin we all know that it's really rock that he has something to do with it so it's like I was saying last week when we was on the live yeah y'all close you getting warmer but you don't have all of the facts the way you think you do Tana, and you coming in huffing and puffing like you the damn big bad wolf but really all of that was circumstantial so you know his rep kept trying to be like listen let me talk and you know we gonna go ahead and have to put this on hold and i'm gonna have to speak to my client and then we will get back to you and set up an appointment or whatever the case may be because he was like i keep telling y'all i didn't have anything to do with this i may have sounded alarm on blurk burke but that's it there's no deeper conspiracy here and he was like well you're as deep in the hole as it could get. That's what Tana was telling him. And it was like, on top of that, you know, we also have info that you was over here looking for Lewis Thomas, who just so happens to be Marvin Thomas' brother. Like, what would be the coincidence in that? We had some, you know, cops that said you was asking something about him. So I'm like, oh, man, everything coming back on damn Howard at this freaking point now, child. Coming back on their ass. So he's saying he put in so many years on this job and he not going to have his name dragged through the damn mud to protect the precinct. And so Santa was like, I'm going to be honest. I don't give a damn about your freaking partner or the girl on the up, you know, the west side. All I really want is freaking Marvin. So if there's a way for you to tell me something about Marvin and the connection that you have with him, we could go ahead and make things work here or whatever. Right. And of course, how would it still stand in 10 toes down that he has nothing to do with you know, Marvin at all, he's like, I don't know what you want me to say, I ain't got nothing to do with no damn Italians and none of this other stuff, right, so of course they don't believe him, and they are saying 
And once they finish talking to him about Lou or whatever, you know, go ahead and leave your badge and your daggone gun, right? And we supposed to get back to them within, I think it was 10 days to give them an answer, have a sit down, have some type of information by then. And if they don't have any information, you know, this is going to be in his best interest because it's the only lead that they have. Then basically it's going to come down on him and he's going to be the one that's going to be brought in and arrested. I said, child, and he was still trying to say, you know, captain, we could figure this out and they was telling him that he's on modified duty and it's only temporary so you know at this point already where Howard is going to be going with this none of us are shocked okay because he ain't trying to lose his job if that's the case he was just about to get a transfer and we thinking that okay the next step would be probably for him to just try to retire and get out of this whole situation baby not be sitting here going to jail so, actually, they told him two days, not ten days. Sorry, y'all, right? And they needed to hear from him by them or they was going to issue a warrant for his arrest. So, child, baby, the heat is on, as they say, right? So, now... Marvin went straight to the lawyer. He ain't playing no games. You know, the lawyer's telling him that right now they don't have nothing. They circle in the block or whatever, you know, just trying to see if there's a way to build a case or whatever and he was like well first they had a tree you know a ci which was Jeru tracking me or whatever now they're trying to press me while i'm out at the daggone funeral paying my respect he was like you better get these damn feds together so he said well you didn't involve divulge nothing to the ci and you know marvin he like it wasn't shit to divulge okay so i ain't do nothing and so the lawyer basically was telling him, well, the only other thing that I could do is shake some trees a little bit. Man, Marvin says, shake them damn trees, okay? And also, while you over there, tell them damn MFers that they they barking up the wrong one, okay? They better get up off me. I said, I know that's right, Marvin. So, Rock over here, minding her damn business, child, okay? Trying to get home. She stopped and or whatever and looking over at the damn park. All of a sudden, the car rolled up on the side of her, child. And she over here like, um, who's this, okay? What you rolling up on me for? Well, baby, they shooting, <laughs> right, bitch? Rock was on that pedal. She put the pedal to the metal and was like, I'm up out of here. See y'all later, deuces, okay? Went flying down that street. I said, I know that's right, bitch. I was in here screaming like, go, rock, go, rock, go. Okay, she swerved around that damn corner. Bumping all into the other cars and then that damn car end up crashing into another one. I said, Ronnie, you and your damn players is whack. Okay, y'all ain't about Jack. Now, child, Lord of mercy. We basically, you know, at this point, <coughs> excuse me, get, um... Famous coming, banging at the damn door. And, of course, Kanan is like, what you doing? And at first, I'm crazy pissed at Famous. Like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you coming back there? You would think he wouldn't want to come back there after what happened with damn, you know, Ronnie the last time or whatever. But I know it had to be something real important. So, I'm like, I know he not looking for Lulu again. So, as soon as Kanan opened up the door, he like, yo, someone tried to hit Rock. I was coming here to make sure that you was okay. He was like, you ain't here about it. You don't know about it. So, Kanan had me up and go in the hallway with him. And is like, what the hell are you talking about? And he was like, yeah. He was like, man, they had a big shooting over there or whatever. She was stopped at a light and they started blasting at her. You know, I heard she got away, but I didn't know if she was good or not. And he, um, you know, Kanan automatically knows that it's Ronnie. And he like that crazy. MF or right my son mm -hmm. so meanwhile Lou still over here talking to the therapist or whatever the case may be I'm sorry not the therapist the damn feds had end up coming here to see him I said lord these freaking feds is annoying they done made their way to him so they asking why detective Howard you know would be looking for him and they basically asking about of course Marvin's relationship with the police and he you know with, with Howard and he like Marvin don't F with no police basically the same thing that Juke was telling them he was like nah he ain't got nothing to do with that so they was like well it's such a coincidence that Howard was looking for you and you know we basically know your connection with Bulletproof Records or whatever. And so, Lulu like, well, I don't understand how he could have been looking for me. And if he was looking for me, he never found me. Because, obviously, I'm here trying to, you know what I'm saying, get back to myself. And <laughs> do what I got to do for me, all right? I'm over here trying to, you know, get my damn therapy and figure out my own damn life or whatever. And then he's like, as far as the recording studio, we already told you what time it was with that or whatever, right? That ain't no damn mystery, my business business partner was in over his head and he didn't pay his debt old and 
you know, he paid the price for it. So they was like, yeah, and, uh, you know, conveniently, he basically is not here to speak for himself and he's dead. And they was like, yeah, we moved back off of him a while back. And he like, okay, well, I don't know what else to tell you. Whatever info I had is what I said to y'all. You're not going to get nothing different. And truth is, I don't really remember what happened, you know what I'm saying, in like the last six months. And that's what we're sitting here talking in this rehab while I'm in the rehab in the first place, right? And I got to get my own shit together. So he was like, unless you want to help me through my 12 steps, y'all could basically bounce. It ain't nothing else for us to talk about. I said, I'm no, that's right, Lou. You know, they over here fair enough, Mr. Thomas, and just looking at each other. I say, yeah, get your asses right the hell on up out of here. I say, okay, Lou. You know, so they talking about some before we go just out of curiosity. This price is, place is a little pricey. How are we paying for it? And Lou was like, you know, who's covering the cost for you? And so he was like, look, I can afford all of this, Ms. Mr. Tanner. Like, what you trying to say? He said, well, in my experience, people that are um, addicted aren't usually frugal. And then Lou said, I drink cheap shit. I said, I know that's right, Lou. Okay, say what you want. But Lou wasn't trying to, you know what I'm saying, say he didn't have them playing his damn face. However, comma, we know that's going to come back later and they are going to look into who's fronting the bill and Rock name is going to come up, child, unless she uses some other alienness to pay for it. Now, we get over to Rock House. She's waiting and Marv come in to give her the damn update. Like, yeah, the streets is talking. It's definitely Ronnie. We ain't really having too much of a question about that, right? And, of course, she's just saying she's not going to go after her son. And, you know, Marv was telling her, like, I know Kanan didn't have nothing to do with this. And he wouldn't approve it or whatever. And she basically was like, look, people do some crazy things, you know what I'm saying, sometime, right? Because when, he, when she was saying that it was Ronnie, she's basically like, no shit. And she said said, you know, you don't have to tell me. So she was like, um, you know, basically when mom said he wouldn't do this to his mother, she was like, listen, we can go crazy sometimes for the ones that we love the most. There's no telling what can happen. Right. But at the end of the day, she's still not going to go against her damn son. We're not going to blaze at Ronnie or whatever. We ain't getting into no war with my damn child in the mix of it. So she was like, I need you to go sit down with Pops and Snaps or whatever and see if we can come to some type of conversation. At least that's a start. So he basically goes right back out the door to, of course, try to see what, you know, parlay we could get going with them, right? Now, Ronnie and freaking <laughs> Pops and Snaps are sitting here talking and Kanan come in there. You ain't never say shit about hitting my moms. You wildin' out. What the hell you doing? Why would you come after her? So Ronnie talking about she came after me first. And he like, accept we partners, nigga. Okay, you don't go after no damn body. And you don't make no decisions on your own. And I told you not to go near my family. And Ronnie stood up. You don't tell me shit, little boy. I said, oh, now he a little boy. But he was grown enough and big enough for you to want to be a part of his damn organization. And use his damn riders. Mm-hmm. Can't have have it both ways, Ronnie. So Kanan was like, you know, basically buffing up at him. And Pop stood up, well, Snap Brother stood up and was like, we on the same page. We on the same team. Like, y'all both chill the hell out, okay? So Kanan was like, this nigga think he calling plays, all right? You ain't calling no damn plays. And he was like, you know, hey, you know, Snap's child, y'all. Pop said, no harm, no foul. Like, Rock's okay. She wasn't hurt or whatever. And, um... Kanan basically was like, look, this ain't what you think it is, Ninja. Okay, and I ain't who you think I am. I said, all right now, Kanan, come on, bitch. I don't really like your ass, but I like when you talking to Ronnie like that because you should have been did that shit from the beginning. Okay, he got me all the way up, okay? So he go walking up. I said, all right now, turn down for what? Let's get it. Now... Over here, freaking Howard, he want to pray to the Allah now, okay? Child, he down on these knees. All of a sudden, he done been able to make it into the mosque because y'all know ever since he had took out Burke, he hadn't been going back in. But now, you know what I mean? We want to cleanse our soul. I say, yeah, you might as well, honey, because you ain't know. Your days was numbered walking this damn earth, child. So anyway, you know, um, child... Famous over here minding his business, his mama cleaning up in the kitchen and making something to eat. And, you know, he's actually on the phone 
with the producer that wanted to work with him and Lulu. And he's still kind of saying Lulu was away on vacation or whatever. And as soon as he get back, he'll let him know. And as he's hanging up the phone from him, he's basically like, damn, what a time for freaking Lulu to be a freaking, you know, drunk. And end up having to go away in freaking rehab. And baby, we got the damn cops kicking in the doors, waving the 4-4. They all over the place. And they talking about famous, you know, you are under freaking arrest, okay? We coming here to arrest you. And he like, what the hell is going? on, I ain't do shit, I ain't do shit, I ain't do shit, and mom over here talking about leaving, you know what I'm saying, my son alone, and he's saying how they got the wrong person, but they like, we got a arrest, and they saying this for murder, and he like, murder, this is bullshit, I ain't do nothing, this is a mistaken identity or something, right, and I was so scared in here screaming, y'all child, I just knew that they was about to go in the room and find the damn hammer because we ain't know that mama done took the damn hammer down to the mom said child but i called it i said she was gonna take that hammer down and people kept talking about oh no she ain't gonna do that mm -mm. you know his mama gonna protect him i said okay had that right but anyway when Pops and Snaps come walking in, we see that Marvin is there. And child, what the hell be going on with Pops? Pops be out here in these streets heavy, baby. Because, I mean, she ain't lying. She seen freaking Marvin was like, ooh, Marvin Thomas, okay. A little chocolatey and delicious. I said, Lord. She told him, I swear I had to lick my fingers. So Marvin was like, yo, where the hell is freaking Ronnie at? You know, he want to get right down to business. And Snaps was like, I don't know, contrary to Papa Blue. I am not my brother's keeper. I don't know where the hell he at. I can't tell you nothing about it, right? No idea where Ronnie is. And so Marvin was like, oh, yeah, well, we need to get, you know, to speak to him real quick. We don't want nobody to get hurt. And so... He told Marvin he's a big believer in, you know, diplomacy or whatever the case may be, right? And what works best for everybody and who's willing to negotiate and sit across from each other. But he's convinced that neither his sister nor Ronnie is in that type of mood right now where they would want to negotiate anything and they're not in that state of mind, right? They both have heads. And so Marvin was like, well, contrary to what the hell y'all think, you know, um, especially since Canaan is involved in all of this, Rock don't want to have, you know what I'm saying, nothing go to war and nothing get any crazier than what it is already. She just want to, you know, basically be able to have this sit down and come down. So they was like, well, she took down that Colombian bitch with no problem. That ain't got nothing to do with y'all, though. I don't understand why we was bringing that up, right? And he's, age, you know, basically Ronnie is agitated behind that, right? So they need to find a way to remedy this situation and so on. Marvin told them, you ain't gonna like what happens next. And then, you know, Snap's talking about some, oh, oh, yeah, I didn't stutter, okay? I ain't stutter. Marvin ain't stutter. He said what he said, bitch. We gonna remedy this or it's gonna be problems. So then when he walking away, you know, Snap's wanna step in front of him. And then, you know, Marvin just walked around him. So, you know, she's still talking about, oh, what a fine black man Marvin <laughs> Thomas is. I said, girl, don't you see that y'all about to be in some shit if y'all don't get this together? You ain't got time to be talking about how fine he is. And then you saying all of this in front of your damn husband. They are some freaking weirdos. And Marvin just stop and shake his head. So, you know, of course they like this shit is about to be a freaking war. And then, you know, Snap's talking about not for Switzerland is not and Pops is saying you know and we Switzerland or whatever and then you know he's basically like yeah and so we not I said child whatever y'all just better get Ronnie ass over here and stop playing meanwhile Rock got all the hammers out you know she setting everything up she getting ready for the get down or the get down and how we're coming knocking at the door and you know the security she got outside is like I wasn't gonna let him you know in but he over here singing how he 5-0 and she like boy are you crazy all of a sudden you don't mind popping up at my door on a surprise visit and bored damn daylight or whatever so he's like yeah now that it done came to the point that it's at I ain't got no damn choice or whatever and it really don't make a difference you know what I'm saying I ain't got shit else to lose maybe you shouldn't have said that damn how with Lord of Mercy so he came on in the house or whatever and he like yo what the hell going on here okay you what the hell about to happen shit you expecting somebody so she was like nah I'm getting this for the ninjas I I ain't expecting right so he said the jig is up Ron. they finally put two and two together and they seeing all this shit adding up and they basically coming for us of course she says are they coming for us or are they coming for you and he said that's one and the same we family we tired of them family we co-conspirators in this shit 
Oh, child. All of a sudden, every time you turn around, we talking about we are family. Whole two and a half seasons, we was nothing to each other. Okay, child. But now we family. We got to stick together. This is our only chance to get up from under it. And of course, once again, he brings up that the only way to save ourselves and to get you and Canaan out of the crosshairs is to let Marvin take the damn fall. She already done told you that was a no-go. How were you still kept bringing the shit the hell up? Now, you know, at this point, she just was looking at him. She ain't even answer because why am I going to repeat myself? Now, at the other side of town, we got, you know, over here in Jamaica Mall. Baby. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
Howard was still telling her that they're running out of options and it's either Marvin, it's me and you and Kanan and all of this. And she was like, the feds is on you, not me. And he was like, no, Rock, they actually have everything and everything I've ever done is to protect you and the kid. Every crime I covered, I even dropped a body. Yeah, I dropped a body and the bodies I dropped is even for you and this for this damn family or whatever, right? And so basically she was like, it's so funny how everybody always want to blame things on me no matter what situation it is or whatever, you know. And he's talking about how he thought Kanan was going to make him a better man before he leave this world and all this other shit. He's like, you know, I ain't going to lie. In the beginning, I thought he was going to basically, you know, save my life or whatever. But now I feel like I could have left the world a little better than what I found it. I'm trying to avoid getting the damn electric chair or whatever, right? And it's all because of you. So when he started saying that or whatever and saying none of this shit would have ever happened if he never got near you, she was like, you know what? Everybody always saying that shit, they problems is my fault, but at the same time they always want me to fix everything. How the hell can it be my fault? But then y'all need to lean on me for me to fix, <laughs> fix it at the same damn time. So I said, I know that that's right, Rock. She do got a point there, right? And so she basically was like, you know, y'all gonna have to figure your own shit out. I'm the problem and the answer at the same damn time. So they get interrupted because Juke and Marvin come running in and they like, it's Kanan. Okay, so conversation gotta stop, Rock. Just standing there looking like, what the hell done happened? Now, meanwhile, Lou's still over here doing therapy with his, you know, counselor, whatever, and, you know, he trying to get some clarity after his sister's visit, and, you know, he was like, I can't get no clarity, you know, for anybody but myself, and the doctor asked, what does clarity look like to you, and he said, I'm Lou Luck Thomas from Southside Jamaica, Queens, you know, he said, well, you're more than that, he said, well, the FBI came here to talk to me or whatever, and the doctor was like, I heard, and he was like, you know, it really just made me realize that I ain't never been more than I'm gonna be, you know what I'm saying, this is who I am, this is who I've always been, um, this is who I'm always gonna be, right, like, Sam, I am, child, so then we get back to, um, rocking them and we try to make a plan and they basically like what the hell is he doing here you know talking about Howard or whatever and she was like he good you could talk in front of him act like he not here so of course um juke starts to let them know like this had to be ronnie that grabs him up or whatever kevin K kanan was even saying it as they was taking him right and so you know, they grab him up in the van or whatever the case may be. And they like, what the hell does he want? And then, um, Rock basically was like everything. Okay. He want every damn thing. Child, Lord of mercy. So we trying to, of course, come up with a plan what we could do to be able to go ahead and get, um, you know, Kanan back. Meanwhile, Famous still asking, where the hell is the lawyer? How long is it going to take the lawyer to get here? And his mom is like, listen, you know, it's just me and you, Famous. You could be, well, you know, she calling him Sean. You know, it's just me and you. You could be honest with me. I'm your mother. Tell me the truth. I'm like, no, don't tell him shit. Don't talk to him about shit in this damn room. This room gets recorded. Like, let's act like we got some damn sense. So, baby Famous was still saying, standing on his. He said, listen, I ain't do a damn thing. She he said, but you told me that you did things you couldn't change. He said, yeah, but I ain't killed no damn body, okay? So now we got the freaking Fed and Captain walking in. I said, y'all got to be freaking kidding me. And Famous is basically like, so now y'all trying to bring the Feds in to scare me? So basically they telling him, listen... You know, you don't have to confess to a crime you didn't commit and we are aware of the situation or whatever and unfortunate things like this happen, especially, you know, sometimes they're extenuating circumstances and things aren't always as they seem. They was like, it could have been a situation where Frederick Williams ran up on you. He has a lengthy, you know, criminal record, multiple arrests, armed robbery and all different kind of stuff. So it wouldn't surprise anybody if this was a self-defense and then famous is still like, you know, because his mom over here talking about, yeah, he could have been protecting himself, my poor boy. But Famous was like, no, like I said, I did not do this shit. I don't have nothing to do with this, so I can't help y'all. And I'm still just waiting on my lawyer. So they like, well, it's come to our attention that when you was detained before, Howard got you out, bitch. He came and assisted in securing you out and released without filing any charges. I said, damn, bitch. So... They was like, all we want to know is about Malcolm Howard. I said, Lord of mercy. 
Oh, child, how what the doors was just closing on and on you, boo, right? But all famous kept still saying is, I want to talk to my lawyer. Where is my lawyer? I, I ain't got a damn thing to say to y'all. So, Rock goes to see, you know, Snaps and Pops or whatever. And, of course, Howard is with her there. And they like, oh, we making friends with the police now. And then he said, you know, he just want to come and make sure shit don't get out of hand. And she's saying, I just want my son back safe. And they like, well, we ain't got your son. And they say, yeah, but you know who the hell got him or whatever. And they talking about they cannot confirm nor deny Kanan's whereabouts. And it's like, come on, listen, let's get down to the get down, right? And then <laughs> Howard says, I came here in a friendly manner. But you know, shit could get unfriendly real damn quick if y'all don't start answering questions in the right way. Tell us what we want to know. Tell us where the hell Ronnie is at, right? And so, basically, of course, he wants a damn sizable little donation in order for her to get Canaan back for good measure. And she say how much? And they say five. And they basically talking about five hundred thousand. Okay, first I thought they were talking about five million for a minute. So now we saying we gonna try to get this money up, but where we going, you know, um, you not gonna be able to go with us and Howard is still singing the same old damn song, right? I'm going with you and I'm gonna help you get, you know, uh Canaan back and I may be able to help you get you know, save you too or whatever. But if I can't then I'ma drop your ass off and drop Marvin off like somebody gotta pay for this, right? And she said she was going to put out the word that he coming because he said, we can't save everybody. I said, okay, Howard, you know. And he said that shit right in front of Dan Marvin, too. Now, they go over to see Stefano. Of course, they trying to get the money from him. And he over here in his damn robe like, what's this? Some damn midnight, you know, middle of the night visit. But I'll make an exception because I kind of got a crush on you. You a little cute. And he ends up saying yes yeah to this, but he's like, this gonna really cost you if I'm giving you this kind of money and your son don't know how much you love him or whatever the case may be, right? And he over here looking at fucking rock extra long and whatever and like, mm, what he gonna want for that money? Now, child, we get over here to Lulu, baby, trigger warning, okay? Because Lulu went inside that damn equipment closet utility closet and he over here getting an extension cord i said what you about to do with that lou what are you about to do with that lou and the only thing i'm gonna say about that part y'all is that it triggered me very much i did lose somebody in that manner i don't joke about stuff like that at all it's very real you know trauma and stress and grief and all of that is real, you know, and he was just in a really bad place where now he can turn to the drink. He really got to sit in his feelings. He really got to talk these things out. He really got to deal with everything in order to be able to heal. And when he looked at himself inside the mirror, that was the only thing I feel like um, really stopped him from going through with it. And, you know, he just started crying and fell to the floor or whatever. I said, Lord Jesus, please come on and hold on, Lou. Okay, you're doing good. You're doing good. Just hang on in there, baby. Now, moving on from him, we getting over to this meeting to go ahead and deal with, you know, Ronnie or whatever, right? And, of course, they want to check him, check the money, Um, you know, check Rob, check, you know, Check Rock, check Howard, check the bag, the money as they coming in. You know, you got um, Marvin stand outside and as a lookout or whatever. At first, Howard was trying to take the money from her, but she was like, nah, nobody holds the money but me, right? And he said, damn, you never trust nobody. And she said, yeah, it's been working good for me so far. And so... You know, we go ahead and we get checked and we go in and Ronnie don't waste no time letting her know like, oh yeah, you brung the cop with you and I was wondering what you was doing running around with a cop and you know, Kanan already done let me know that this is father. So right there, we knew, okay. Well, we already knew, but we really knew, knew that nobody was going to leave this damn room, right? And so, she's like, just give me my son, because he told her to throw the bag, and he all bending down. We rich, bitch, okay, looking in the bag of money, and while he busy down looking, you know, Kanan just walks up behind him and was like, pop goes the weasel, because right before that, when he was saying, like, you know, 
I can't give you what's not mine. Canaan ends up walking over and being like, yeah, y'all been played or whatever. And they both looking at each other like, what? You was down with this? You set this up? You working with Ronnie? You and Ronnie in this together? And he talking about, you know, yeah, I wanted, you know, to work with the connect or whatever the case may be. And she's saying, Canaan, you don't know what you doing. And they were saying Canaan wanted the money or whatever. And he's like, I do. Every time he say that I do shit, I want to kick his damn teeth in. Right, but he made me happy. He made me happy. I said, okay, you can keep your teeth. Because, bitch, that's when Ronnie was bending down over that damn bed. And he came up behind Ronnie and put a big old hole in his head, bitch. Plap! Okay, we seen him go down and I was like, hey, that's what I'm talking about. Go Kanan, go Kanan, go Kanan, go Kanan. Okay, now I'm back on your side. Now I can rock with you. So... Child, Rock, go ahead and pick up damn Ronnie damn grandma and hold it up at Howard. And Howard, like, you see this shit, and the next thing you know, because even when Kanan popped Ronnie, you know, he was like, what the F, child? Oh, Howard, baby, karma is a bitch, honey. That was some poetic justice. He got it on the side of his damn head in the same damn way that he gave it to Burke. And then, you know, Kanan is like, what the F? Why the hell did you do that? And she's just like, it had to be done. You know, come on. You got to come with me or whatever. And she pick up the bag and her Marvin and Kanan go ahead and walk out to the vehicle. You know, of course, we had to pop the other guys when they came running in. You know, Marvin was there right behind them to take them out. So, we got to get the F up out of here. So, they go ahead to go to the vehicle. So, child, why the damn camera was panning back down to Ronnie again? I said, I know this bitch ain't about to pop up like he did Michael Myers. I was going to be too freaking through, right? And we get in the slow motion or whatever the case may be. And we just see some boots standing down, you know, well, <laughs> the camera, I should say, pans down to some boots. And then comes up and bam! When Unique Face all, all popped up on the screen and he was looking down. Down with the king. I said, bitch. Yeah, I said he was the walking dead. I said he was the walking dead. I said he was the last of us, child. I said, nah, he probably not the clicker status, but he over here a freaking zombie. He rotting in the freaking grave. Worms is eating up his damn brains. I, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I said it. I was like, why would they bring back freaking Unique? They ain't bringing back Unique. Give it up. Turn it loose, y'all. Let it go. Let it flow. Let that dream, you know what I'm saying? Fly. Say it no more. But y'all would not give up y'all kept going on shout out to my girl moochie because she definitely said that shit and she was like i don't give a damn i'm standing 10 times toes down unique will be back so ow <laughs> she was right i was wrong unique is still in the freaking building and you hear grown saying it grown cane and saying if you take anything from all of this bullshit when you kill a nigga make sure he's dead down with the king. <laughs> what did y'all think about this episode, y'all? Put it in the comments. Let me know. I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed this season, just me personally. But let me know your rating. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. All that good stuff. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Till next time, y'all. Oh, and like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Okay. Holla at your girl. Salut <laughs>